One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, Fournette. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and today what we are going to be talking about is a question that every single sports fan from every single sport asks themselves every single day. And that big question is, what is if sports fans have always asked the what if questions for all of their favorite sports teams if this went different then this would have happened and then we would have end up winning the championship for whatever sport you are referring to and that is no different than my favorite team your favorite team and your mom's favorite team haven't busted that one out in a while the jacksonville Jaguars. There are some big what if moments in the franchise history that has affected its long term team planning and its short term as well. And today we are going to be going over five of the biggest what ifs in Jaguar history. Number five, what if the Jaguars took Russell Wilson? Now it's easy to say this one because the Jags did not draft anybody of any value in the third round of the 2012 NFL Draft. They drafted a punter in the third round, ladies and gentlemen, with Russell Wilson, Nick Foles, and Kirk Cousins, all three of them, looking at the Jaguars directly in the face. Despite the fact the Jags had Blaine Gabbert and Chad Henney at the time, they didn't think the quarterback position was a big enough need to not only not address it in the first round, but not address it in any of the later rounds either. Now, if the Jags prioritize the quarterback position a little more, there's tons more of what-ifs we can talk about at the quarterback position, but one of the biggest ones was in 2012 when the Jags selected Brian Anger instead of Russell Wilson. If the Jaguars would have drafted Russell Wilson, who's to say that the team was built around him enough for him to really succeed? But if we're going to be going off of Russell Wilson's success in Seattle, then the Jags probably would have got their fair share of success. Russell Wilson has brought the Seahawks to two Super Bowls and they've won one. And if he could bring that, if he would have brought that same magic over to Jacksonville, who can, who knows what the Jags could have done in the years 2012 through now. Maybe we would already have a Super Bowl ring. And though our offensive line at the time was not that stout, you can't say the Seahawks' offensive line has ever really been stout. Russell Wilson is always running for his life. He doesn't run out of magic. So that is a big what if in Jaguar minds is what if the Jags took a shot on Russell Wilson in the third round instead of Brian Anger and things probably would have panned out differently for the Jags and maybe by now we'd be bragging about our one or two or three Super Bowl rings. What if the Jaguars took any quarterback from 2014 on? The Jags drafted Blake Bortles in the 2014 NFL Draft, and oddly enough, he was probably the most successful quarterback of his draft class. But if we were to give up on the Blake Bortles experiment just a tad bit earlier, there were some other quarterbacks who are now taking over franchises and taking over the NFL as a whole that the Jags could have had at the quarterback position. You got guys like Deshaun Watson. When Watson came out in the NFL Draft, I really thought it was a realistic possibility that the Jags were going to try and snatch him up to be the quarterback of the future if the Blake Bortles project does not pan out. The Jags did not do that. And then the year prior, Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes was on the board as well. The Jags decided to pass him up. You also have guys that went a little higher and probably two guys that really can't, the Jags couldn't control it. Jared Goff, Carson Wentz, etc. And they basically pulled the same situation they pulled with Blaine Gabbert and Chad Henney in 2012. They were just so confident in Blake Bortles' abilities that they did not even look at quarterback as a need. But the Jags could be rolling with Patrick Mahomes right now. And oh my god, if we managed to get Patrick Mahomes, and this team's future would have been so much different because Patrick Mahomes, a lot of people on the internet say Mahomes' this year last year was a flash in the pan. He's never going to do that again. In my opinion, Patrick Mahomes is an elite passer. He's an elite quarterback in the league, and he's only had one year to prove it, and he was an MVP 50 touchdowns. Now, if that same you know, luck came to Jacksonville, especially at the time when we were there, you know, we had guys like 
Allen Robinson, Allen Hearn slotted in there. Mr. Patrick Mahomes would have had a heyday, and maybe he would even make Mercedes Lewis a little bit better of a tight end. Same thing with Deshaun Watson, and he could have made the Jaguars better, and maybe we could have made the playoffs a little sooner than we did, and maybe we could have just inched out to make the Super Bowl, but who knows, because the Jags did not pull the trigger on any of those quarterbacks. Number three, what if the 2018 Jaguar squad wasn't so injured. Now the AFC South last year had the most winning teams out of any division in the NFL. Now if the Jags didn't suffer so many injuries, you may have add, had to add four winning teams to that division. And one team probably would have ended up getting shafted out of getting the playoffs because that's how the playoff system works, unfortunately. But the Jaguars had all the potential. They were riding the big high in 2018 after making it to the AFC Championship game. But tons of injuries plagued this Jaguar squad and hurt the team morale as a whole and really, really brought this team back from where it was in 2017. They had a big off year. Receivers were dropping the ball. We were finally figuring out that Blake Bortles was not the answer. And then we had all of these injuries to top it off with. Now, if the Jags weren't so injured in 2018 and maybe Blake Bortles' play stepped up a little bit more, the Jags might have made a return to the NFL playoffs, but we will never know because the injuries did happen, the injuries did linger, and the Jags failed to make the playoffs and had another upsetting year like we are so used to going 5 and 11. But it's a big what if, if the Jaguars were able to stay healthy like they were in 2017, what 2018 would have been like. Number two, what if the Titans didn't make it to the AFC Championship game in 1999? Now the Jaguars took on the Tennessee Titans in the 1999 AFC Championship game and unfortunately fell short. That was the notorious year for the Jags where they went 14-2 uh, at the end of the regular season with two losses both being to the Tennessee Titans. And who had the exit plan for the Jaguars in the, two, in the 1999 playoffs? None other than the Tennessee Titans. They eliminated the Jaguars from the playoffs and did not have a shot at their first Super Bowl in 1999. It was very, very unfortunate. Jags fans from across the globe were really, really upset. I personally wasn't too upset because I was one year old and I was probably worrying about baby stuff. You know, at the time, I'm like, man, I am just not getting fed today. I'm going to cry. And, you know, I probably would have cried as well if I was, you know, a grown man in 1999 watching the Jags play in the playoffs, but I was a baby, so I was more concerned with getting food, and this is a random tangent tree. Get off the tangent. You don't need to talk about this anymore. Please change the subject. Anyway, so the Titans played the Colts in the divisional round of the 1999 playoffs. The Jags played the Miami Dolphins and, of course, blew them out 62-7. to The Colts and the Titans did battle with a second-year Peyton Manning who just got off a 4,000-yard year, uh, over 30 touchdowns, and 15 interceptions, so his turnover problem was still prevalent in 1999. The Jags and the Colts did not do battle during the regular season in 1999, so it's hard to say what exactly the results would have been, but you would have to imagine the confidence and the demeanor heading into that game would have been a little bit more relaxed, would have been a little bit more calm, because they know that this is a team they haven't played yet, a team that they could probably beat, and it's not the Titans, who they already lost to twice in the regular season, and now they have an opportunity to lose to them again in the AFC Championship game. The funny thing is, is the Colts almost itched out a victory against the Titans in the divisional round. They lost 19-16, to but it was a sneak preview of what Payton Peyton Manning had to offer the NFL, and then he ended up having an illustrious career, a Hall of Famer, definitely first ballot, should be at least, and, you know, Peyton Manning, who would end up being a division rival for the Jags, would have had to face the Jags in the AFC Championship game, and maybe things would have been different, and maybe you would have seen the greatest show on turf against this Jaguars solid defense, and one of the most electrifying offenses in the AFC with Jimmy Smith and Keenan McCardell and Mark Brunel, and that was the Super Bowl we all deserved, but what if, what if is the question we can only ask for the 1999 playoffs? And number one, what if Miles Jack actually wasn't down? Now, this 
still hurts to this day in 2017, especially for young Jags fans like myself that didn't really get to experience the high of the 1999 AFC Championship season. As a Jags fan, I have only watched the Jags play a couple of playoff games, a couple of Monday night games, no Sunday night games, and of course multiple Thursday night games against the Tennessee Titans. Hashtag tuck the fightins. Flood the comment section with hashtag tuck the fightins. But of course the most iconic moment, one of them in Jaguar history, was when Miles Jack was ruled down when he stripped... Uh, De- was it Deion Lewis? It was either Deion Lewis or James White. When he stripped Deion Lewis or James White of the ball, he wasn't touched. He was going to go into the end zone untouched. The Jags were going to be taking a big lead, and that might have been the dagger in the New England Patriots, but he was ruled down, and the Jags didn't do anything in the ensuing possession. Now, if Miles Jack was not ruled down, the Jags would have took a three-possession lead in the fourth quarter and that would have been over and it would have been done with and the Jags would be in victory formation facing their now new quarterback in the Super Bowl Nick Foles in Super Bowl 50 now oh my god it was Super Bowl 52 Super Bowl 52 and I'm just thinking to myself oh my god there are so many what ifs in this game not only what if uh, uh, Miles Jack wasn't down but what if Stephon Gilmore didn't tip that pass on third down what if they didn't get that first down on third down and 15 this whole game is just a big big train of what if scenarios and unfortunately for us We had to live with the results, and that was the New England Patriots taking down the Jacksonville Jaguars. But as fans, and as passionate fans, we can always say, hashtag Miles Jack wasn't down, and we can always ask, what if? And that was the five biggest what-if moments in Jaguar history. What you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, you can pick up some Troop Talks merch at teespring.com forward slash store forward slash Troop Talks. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Dems are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great day.